let's have a crack at this. Now, I've noticed a couple of common errors just as I've walked around the room. Um, by the way, this is the kind of question that you can see. It takes one idea and it shows you in one fell swoop how all of the ideas that we've been and skills that we've been separating out, they really are all about understanding and studying the same, the one object, right? And when you put them all together, it does become a little more hard rather than, okay, factorize. Here's a hundred questions to factorize. And then, you know, find the vertex. Here's a hundred quadratics and find the vertex. When you get asked to do a successive bunch of different steps. That is harder, okay? So don't be too surprised if you're like, hmm, this is a challenge. It's meant to be a challenge, okay? Let's have a go. First, the factorization, okay? Now, before I do the factorization, a number of you have got a factorization. You've got something that looks like this. Something times something, okay? Now, what I'm going to suggest you do is before I show you what I'm about to do, look at your factorization. One of the great things about factorizing is you can always know whether you are right or not. Right? It's very simple to check because if I gave you something like, okay, this is not, this is not the answer, but um, suppose this was the answer, okay? It's really easy to check whether that's correct or not, whether I've factorized properly because to go from this to that is one direction, but <sighs> stupid boy bands. <laughs> to go the other way, right? You still able to say that with a straight face. To go the other way, what do we call that? To have something with brackets and then to do something to it and get rid of the brackets. What do we call that? We call it expanding, right? And expa expanding is easy. We're very good at it. What's the expansion of this? Help me out. You'd go x and then you multiply by these two terms. So you get x squared plus 2x, right? And then you've done the x, so now you do the negative 1. That it's going to be minus x minus 2. You can do a little bit of super simplifying there which gives you this, right? In case um, you've never seen this metaphor before, the way I think about it is it's like, you know, a pair of people coming to someone else's house, right? So this guy, he says hi to both people, right? Because otherwise, that's just rude, like to say hi to one person and say, hey, let me ignore you, sorry, right? The first person says hi to both, and then the second person also says hi to both because they're very polite, right? Now, clearly, this is not the factorization of this because I expanded and I didn't get back what I wanted. So I want you to check your expand your factorization. See if it expands and it gives you what you expect. Okay. Now, there's my prelude. Um, how are we going to do this? We're usually searching for a pair of numbers, right? This is not monic because there's a two out the front. So what kind of pair of numbers, what, what does my pair of numbers do? What are we searching for? What do they, um, what do the pair of numbers add to in this case? <coughs> They add to this number in the middle, negative 5, minus 5, okay? What do the pair of numbers multiply to? Something times something equals um, negative 14, right? Yeah, yeah, you okay with that? Okay. Now, what pair of numbers is going to do this? Um, 14, when you factorize it, there are only 1, 2, 3, 4 factors for the number 14. What are the factors? You compare them up. Just think about positives. Don't worry about the negative for a second. I can do 2 and 7, and I can do, what's the other option? 1 and 14, okay? Now, which of these is going to give me a sum of minus 5? Now I have to put some signs in here. Oh, it's uh, 2 and 7. It's going to be, yeah, which, it's going to be 2 and 7. Which one's negative? Negative. Seven. Minus 7, right? So if I go 2 and minus 7 in there, okay? In fact, it's actually the numbers that you have because I made this up on the fly, so I had to make an easy example. Dinesh? Is it just a minus 7 because it's a minus 7 in the equation, or is minus 7 because it's a bigger number, you have to make it a bigger number minus? Okay, so it's a minus 7, not necessarily because of this, right? I could have swapped these around and it'd still be multiplying to minus 14. So, for instance, I, I could have written this question. Uh, <coughs> minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 7. Just look at that for a second. Do you see if I redid this exercise? My numbers still have to add to negative 5. Do you see that? And the numbers still have to multiply to negative 14. Do you see that? Okay. But now the numbers I want are still going to be 2 and negative 7, despite the fact that I have a plus 7 there, right? It's because it's the product, the combined thing that I'm interested in. Okay. So let me get rid of that so we don't confuse ourselves. Uh, we've got 2 plus negative 7 and then 2 times negative 7. It works, doesn't it? Okay, so what do I do with this pair of numbers though? Because this is not monic, you have to be careful with it. What am I going to do with them? What was the point of thinking of these two numbers? Yeah, I mean... You substitute it back into the middle, which is 
Very good, yes. Fantastic. Okay, let me, let me write that down. So just in case you didn't catch that, right? And this is actually a crucial step. Uh, y is equal to 2x squared. The whole point of coming up with this pair of numbers is to break apart this guy, to, to slice it in two so one can factorize here and the other can factorize here. Please note, please note, because I saw a lot of you doing this when you walked around. Um, you were thinking back in, in monic mode, right? So you thought 2, negative 7. I know what to do with those numbers. I'll just write this. Okay, which is why I suggested to you, check your expansion. It's really quick to see that that does not expand out to this, right? Like for starters, there's only going to be a single x squared term, right? Do you see that? But I need two. Like in fact, there's, this is wrong in a couple of different ways, right? So different kind of problem. That's why you got to do a different thing with these numbers. Let's write them down. Plus 2x minus 7x minus 7. Are you happy with that? Do you see how it's equivalent to the line we started with? Yeah? All right, now what do I do? I've got four terms instead of three. What am I going to do with them? Yeah. Uh, 2x and bracket 8 plus 1 and then minus 7 and then x and then uh, plus 1. Good, OK. Um, once you factorize that first pair, if you've done it right, you actually don't need to really think very much factorizing the second pair because you should end up with the same thing in both cases. OK, you happy with that? All right, now I can finish the factorization. Here we go. 2x minus 7. That's how many lots of x plus 1 that I have. Okay. Does anyone want me to pause before I move on, explain any parts? Okay, that was part A. Part B falls out pretty quickly from that. In fact, some of you might have done part B um, without even thinking, uh, which is to solve for when y equals 0. That will give you the roots, right? So you might be able to just read those numbers off for me. When y, which is the left-hand side, when it's 0, what x values am I going to get out of that? There's an easier one and a hard one. What's the easy one to read off? Minus, minus, minus one, right? You just look at that and you're like, oh, that's easy. Okay, negative one. The other one, you've got to work with the fraction there, but you look, it's not too hard to work out. Seven on two. Yeah, it's going to be seven on two because you've got to divide by two because that's multiplying by two, right? So seven on two, you multiply it by two. <coughs> seven minus seven gives you zero. So, or three and a half, okay? In fact, I'm going to write that underneath. It'll be useful to us in a second. 